Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Brahma Mira Striparam Takare Banu Shashi Bumi Sutto Buddha Sha Guru Sha Shukra Shani Rahu Keteva Sarve Graha Shanti Gara Bhavantu Om <coughs> Om Rim Buddha Yanama, Om Rim Brisapati Yanama, Om Rim Shukraya Namaha. Um, greetings and welcome to another episode of Cosmic Kev 100. This is your weekly video astrological zine. And um, I would love it if you would subscribe, ring the bell notification, um, have some comments, like. Definitely share with a friend like more people. I'd like to get up to a thousand subscribers Like I'm close to 800 right now, and uh, it's really crucial to get out there in the uh, In the ether world of the internet with this uh, positive message uh, of hope that we're bringing um, Erinko Grog to those of you who are claiming Irish descent or just you know have an affiliation for Irish people and celebrating their their traditions and their liberty as Celts. Um, Celts are part of bluegrass music <clears throat> which brought about rock and roll and uh, they had the Irish people had alliances with the Africans that's why we have the Nubian armors the same as the Celtic and um, I just we've been we have language things that relate to Irish people. You know, people say, oh, they're full of malarkey, that's an Irish slur, or that people are up to mischief, that they're, they're hooligans or shenanigans. I mean, these are all like slurs for Irish people. And so we don't realize, you know, if you were in this country 140 years ago, uh, there would be like signs that said, no Irish allowed, we don't like Irish here, things like that. Um, Irish people were taken into slavery. The English took almost half a million Irish children into slavery between the 1600s and 1800s. Um, some serious stuff happened. Irish was forbidden language in the 19th century and early 20th century. You could get beaten. Your kids could be taken away, brought to English schools, just like native kids were here in this country. Uh, you know, Irish people have been through a lot. And um, on this St. Patrick's Day, I think it's really important to recognize that fact. And a lot of Irish Americans are doing really well. They don't experience that same kind of discrimination today. But it's also important to know your roots and know that a lot of people suffered and, and that your wealth today was on the backs of your ancestors. And so to always consider that, you know, when you're going. And, and I also think it's really that alcohol is a drug that's used to subjugate people. And, you're better off just eating some Irish soda bread than just saying, blaming your alcoholism on your being Irish. It's not cool, you know, and it's a real put down. I find as someone who's of mainly Irish heritage, I don't like that. I find it's a real put down to blame drinking. I drink because I'm Irish. And if you're somebody who relaxes with a little glass of wine or alcohol, a little bit of whiskey once in a while. I'm not, you know, there's no problem with that. <clears throat> but, you know, it's that extremity, extremes of getting altered that really causes problems. Now, you know, getting back to the astrology, <clears throat> Irish people are somewhat associated with Taurus in a lot of ways um, because there's like a cow. The cow was a big deal in their uh, money, and Pisces certainly is associated with Ireland because of St. Patrick's Day and it's sidereal Pisces as well. So if you're born on this day, you're Pisces in both systems, both Vedic and in Western astrology. Now as far as where the moon is at today, well the moon is in um, a lunar mansion known as Uttara Shada, which is ruled by the sun, shining with truth and it really helps remove obstacles. It has an association with the Tusk of Ganesha <clears throat> and it's considered an auspicious day to start new businesses and stuff. Moon will be moving into Shravana, which is really about spoken word and 
poetry and reciting things and is ruled by the moon later on today and, and tomorrow. <clears throat> and uh, then we have a new moon this week, folks. We have a new moon uh, relatively early on the 21st. And that new moon is in a lunar mansion known as um, Uttara Bhadra, or Uttara Bhadrapada, which is like the tail end of the funeral pyre. So we're really burning off a lot of old stuff in this new cycle, and it's very close to um, the... Um, it's very close to Pluto going into Aquarius in Western astrology, and Venus just went into Taurus, so we're feeling a lot more love right now on, on a real level, and and um, <clears throat> overall, I think things are looking up, folks. Let's uh, let's just go with that now. Just say, hey, Cosmic Kept said things are looking up. Sun moves in Aries uh, on um, Monday afternoon Pacific time at uh, 2.24 p.m. So that's Easter. Um, <clears throat> it's not Easter Sunday, but that's the original name for Easter. Also, it's Ramadan this week. At Wednesday night begins Ramadan. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, just all this um, <clears throat> cosmic change, you know, on, on every on every level, <clears throat> and uh, of course, we do have um, Pluto going into um, Aquarius as well. So when does that happen exactly? I know everybody wants to know because this is a big deal. It is going to go retrograde, and, and that happens on Thursday, late Thursday morning, the 23rd. So, <clears throat> but I mean, today even the moon is close to um, Pluto in Western astrology. It's in Aquarius, you know, and, and just like, wow, you know, you can feel it. You know, there's this tingling, there's this, this change in the air. And um, I say, may it be positive. Uh, Aries. For you, <clears throat> it's definitely positive because, you know, sun's going to go into your first house. And so this kind of death, letting go, releasing theme is turning into, oh, I'm being me. I am. Aries' key phrase is I am. And you're going to expand to that. And Venus is in the second house. That could bring a little more money for you. It also could bring, like, you want to indulge in sweets or in a lot of food. Um, or spend money on luxuries, you know, because you're doing a little better. So that's something to consider as you go through your week. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, with the exception of like the North Node being in Scorpio, we're kind of like, you know, all the Grahas, you know, are pretty much on one side of the chart. So it's easy to get into this kind of lopsided thinking and stuff. And it's just important to be aware of that as you go through your week. Just mindfulness, folks. Um, greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, I think it's going to be good for Taurus. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Venus is going to help. It's going to take some of the edge off the sun moving into your 12th house. So, So, I mean, there's been parties, and you might be going to parties this weekend. St. Patrick's Day brings a lot of parties. Spring Equinox brings a lot of parties. New Moon. It's more introspective, but this is where we set out our intentions. So, this is a week of, like, how do we want things to go through the cosmic year? You know, a lot of people say, in a lot of traditions, spring is really the new year. That's why I prefer Chinese New Year over Roman calendar New Year. Um, I mean, I get that too, because, you know, the sun's starting to grow. I mean, January 1st is pretty arbitrary. Um, but, um, you know, December 21st isn't. You know, that's, you know, a real birth. But March 20th, March 21st, it's like now light dominates over night. Woo! Yeah! And we'll do that until the end of September. So it's like, whoa, bring on the light. Bring on the sun, you know. <clears throat> and here in Northern California, we have had probably the coldest winter in, you know, like 25 years or more. And so um, we're ready. We're ready for this warmth to uh, 
take over and, and be a part of this, you know, and, and uh, just having the ample water supply is such a blessing, you know, because we've been in serious drought. It's not over. <clears throat> but Taurus, <clears throat> Venus in the first house is going to make everything a little better for you. Okay. And North Node, I mean, it's kind of like a disguise. It's like, hmm, I'm going to present myself to this person as the seducer or the seductress, you know, there's a little bit of that going on. I don't know what to say. No comment. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> Greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. So here's like the switch, you know, Aries is for Gemini the 11th house. So like you're going to be going into more of a social life period over the next several weeks seeing friends, older siblings, people like higher ups that want to help you and want to be your friend. Or, you know, there's usually people in my life that are on the bottom that will never be able to help me, that I help a little. And there's people that are above me that I really can't help, but they're helping me. And that's really just, that's the way real life is. Um, but yeah, you go from all this career responsibility to this sort of like richer social life that you're engaging in. And um, Mercury moving into the 11th house, it's going to bring more friendships. It's going to bring more social opportunities, more parties. I mean, what Gemini doesn't like a party? And later on, when we get to next week, Mars is going to go into Cancer. And that's, you know, you just, I mean, I would say sell your guns, you know. <laughs> sell your weapons. <laughs> All right. Greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, you know, Cancer is associated in some ways with nationalism and patriotism um, and tribalism, you know, finding your tribe. I mean, all these things kind of sound it's just in a political correct way, like, oh, these are negatives. But, you know, we're naturally inclined to want to follow our families and be a part of a great tradition. Um, if you tell a Giants fan that, you know, um, you hating people that like the Dodgers is, is tribalism and it's just stupid, <clears throat> they're going to be really mad and upset. But that's, so you see what I'm talking about? Tribalism goes in all kinds of different ways. It's not that bad. It's great to be a Giants fan. You like the Giants? It's fun to like the Giants. You like the Cleveland Indians? It's fun to like the Indians. I mean, you know, it, it's... Um, well, okay, yeah, I get it. You don't want to, well, you know, we were dumb, okay? You know, in, in our history, we were dumb to name people, names, ethnic names, fighting Irish. I mean, even that's kind of like, ugh, gross, you know? I don't want to be associated with violent because of my ethnicity. That's not cool. And so, yeah, we could see how we've done that. You know, it's interesting that they say that Irish Americans are the closest people that have had a history that was similar to Native Americans and similar to African Americans on both accounts. So for those of you who are Irish, think of yourself as a bridge builder, you know, and, and, and most of these people that are alleged Latinos or Latinx or whatever, they're mostly like 80% Native American. They're indigenous people that have a little bit of Spanish in them by and large, you know, and so the as well as Africans, African Americans, these are your brothers and sisters too. You have great cultural similarities and it's like let's make more of our similarities and less of our differences. Um, Aries time focuses on Cancer's career. So, you know, you're going to be doing better in the career world, you're going to be doing better in your social life. Um, this weekend, you know, it's kind of like a lay low weekend. I think you'd be, you'll do better just celebrating um, solstice and uh, celebrating just, you know, Sunday will be a better day for you. <clears throat> all right. All right. So um, let's go over to Leo. Leo land. Okay. So Aries time, I mean, the sun is exalted in Aries. So let's start with that. So um, Leo, this is going to be a good time for you. This is going to be, you're out of that, you'll get out of that Piscean darkness after this weekend and all that murkiness, and you'll be like, ah, I'm a better teacher, I'm a better father, I'm a better leader, um, I'm a more generous co-worker, all those things will kind of start to flourish, and, you know, a little light will go on in your mind, and things that were not so clear, I know it's funny when that happens, things that were not so clear 
will become much more clear to you. It happens when all the grahas are concentrated in one area, you know, it, it does, it creates this crazy imbalance and we can see this on this wheel. So illustrated my point perfectly. But I mean, you know, here's the thing, Leo, it's like Saturn's going through your eighth house. <clears throat> and, you know, I know in like the Vedas there's a special, in Jyotish there's a special thing about this. It's hard, you know, it's depressing. <clears throat> and um, it's ego crushing is what I've heard. And we all know Leos don't have an ego. <laughs> It's like, there he's at it. Cosmic Cubs banging on Leo. Hey, look, I got Leo in my chart too, folks. You know, we all have every single sign in the zodiac in our charts. So don't get all attached to your personal sun sign because we're all, all of it. Okay? And yes, I am full of it. But we move on forward. I digress. So Leo, this is going to be an upliftment of your soul. But it's also a time where you're dealing with some really harsh more depressing things and so you know if you have a Leo friend and you know they're going through some hard stuff just compassion to them show some love to them you know don't rub it in um, social life's good it looks like work is actually getting better you're getting more empathy at work you're able to beautify things more opportunities for travel it's not, it's not all bad greetings Virgo welcome to your horoscope so I mean Pisces is pretty you know it's kind of like this eye of the hurricane for Virgos you know because sixth house a lot of hard work sometimes health issues seventh house relationships not you know it's like a little more peacemaking a little bit more um, heart opening <clears throat> eighth house could be kind of sexy could be kind of mysterious getting into the occult but it also could be death and loss and other people being in control and my, my best suggestion Virgo is just don't just relax you're not in control just let things happen for the next four and a half weeks you know let God sort it out and pay attention to your spiritual life trust your intuition more because you are right on the money I mean now that Mercury's in Aries in your eighth house you'll be sensing things um, as far as you know Saturn moving into your seventh house it's kind of a make it or break it time for relationship to be really honest with you and so the valuable things about a person you know if you're in a relationship with somebody let's do things to that you would like let's work on the difficulties and make this a more permanent standing relationship you know permanent relationships are so beautiful they're like pillars to the community and it creates a sense of live reliability going from one thing to another is constant distraction it's more experience I could submit there's an amount of fun but you never get there deep you know I I'm more of a pra practitioner of white tantra. It's like w love your wife. Your lover is your w your wife or your husband, and um, you know, in in a place of commitment, you're able to go deeper with people. So I'm tolerant of everyone's lifestyles, but I will say that you know, if, for the sake of spiritual development, there's a real blessing when you're grounded with someone else and you're having a good, mutually enjoyable relationship. And so, um, you know, and I, I mean, I know, I've, I've, I've given Virgo a lot of crap before. Now that Neptune's there, it's like it's saying, you know, have a spiritual relationship. And, you know, with Jupiter and then Mercury now moving into, along with the Sun, all moving into your eighth house, it's like going deep. Just focus on your spiritual life, work all that stuff out. And don't be afraid to ask for help, because actually people will help you when the sun's going through your eighth house. So that's the good news. All right, greetings, Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. This isn't so bad. You're kind of a relationship sign. You know, all the Libras I know, they like relationships. Um, and, um, you know, one of my friends here, one of my people, I know, um, named Melissa she has a relationship with the, this gentleman lives like far away like you know like seven or eight hundred miles away from her or something you know and and they both seem to like really like each other it just seems like beautiful I have another friend who um, isn't a, a Libra necessarily but she has a long distance relationship you know and it's, it's not always as, as easy to negotiate these things um, but relationships are going to be more in focus for Libra and um, Venus 
is in the eighth house. So that's deep desire and passion and, you know, <clears throat> moving towards Uranus. Could be like sex magic or something, but it also could be, you know, this feeling of um, not quite getting there, you know, and um, needing some kind of inspiration or just some kind of eccentric love. You know, maybe it isn't it, you know, maybe it is like a polyamorous or group marriage situation. I mean, any, anything could happen during this stage. Mars in Gemini encourages the travel in the ninth house. And um, Pluto moving, you know, moving over into the fifth house, it's going to change your relationship with your children. Yeah. All right, Scorpio, welcome to your horoscope. Well, <clears throat> you know, everything's kind of in the bottom or introspective part of the chart, kind of like the family part of the chart, though. You know, Pluto and the Moon, House of the Parents, um, Neptune and Saturn now in the house of your children. So if you have a child, they might need some extra support, you know, with Neptune and Saturn together. It's like, wow, you know, and also spiritual discipline, encouraging spiritual discipline in your family for your children. Pray every day, you know, start your day with gratitude, you know, thank you, God, I can breathe. Thank you, God, I have vision. Thank you, God, my body parts are moving, you know, just different things. I have good digestion. I had a good night's sleep, whatever you can be thankful for, you know, oh, it's springtime, you know, flowers are coming out and blossoms and it's beautiful. There's more daylight. I can be outside more, all those things. Be thankful, you know, start your day with thanksgiving, um, enter into his Courts with praise, um, the water, you know, turning into a fire sign. You know, Aries is sort of like, um, <clears throat> like a baby Scorpio. <laughs> oh my God, I, I, I don't, I don't want to like start bagging on Aries right now, because uh, I'm part Aries too. You know, we all have something in our in our chart everything you know is is we all are one but here's the thing is that Scorpio operates more on intuition and is a fixed sign so it's not quite as quick to act or react it's not as impulsive it likes to let's settle with this first let's see if this settles in water what floats what sinks you know let's do some research um, let's look a little deeper and so um, you know, working on your health, getting physically fit. I think that's the that's the, the pulse for Scorpio this week. Um, greeting Sagittarius, welcome to your horoscope. You're going to love it. You're going to love this. Um, sun's in your fifth house. Ah, everything's happy. Joy, joy, creativity, children, you know, upliftment. Um, you know, I... So when I was a kid, they took children to the zoo. Now they take you to drag shows. <laughs> I just like, I can't even, like, what the heck? No, I, I don't think, not everyone's taking their kid to a drag show. I mean, it's kind of a drag. I'd rather go drag racing, but no. <laughs> it's all bad. You know, I think of the words of George Carlin. It's all bad and it's all not good for you. <laughs> Well, I mean, I hope you're avoiding fights. I know it was a little bit harder on you last week, but I, things are going to lift up for you, you know. And, I mean, the thing with your parents and your family, you got to be, I'm sure you're facing some difficulties in that area or in your housing situation. You know, you might be in trouble with housing or you're having to address things like a leaky roof or a, or a foundation that's not doing well. Um, hope is on the way. And um, you're very optimistic, and I think that your kids are doing good, and uh, you just need things to inspire you to help others and be with groups of people that like to help others, and that's going to make everything rock. The weekend looks good for you socially among your neighbors, and I mean, as we just get in the beginning of the week, I think just kind of ground down, meditate, and say, what do I want to really manifest this year? <clears throat> Well, greetings, Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, <clears throat> look at this. 
This is the introspective side of the chart. This is where you work on your personal life. It's all about the personal you. Now, here's the good news. You know, Pluto has left your sun sign, so, or will at the end of the week. So it's like, it's not going to be quite as hard, you know. I mean, if you're born on like the 19th of January, yeah, it's not going to be that different, you know. But I would say even if you're born on the 15th, you're going to start to feel like, okay, it's easing up just a little bit here. I can feel it. If you're born on the... You know, I, I mean, if you're going to like the 12 or before, it's like, oh, yeah, the worst is over. This is this is done. It's a done deal. You know, I'm, I'm okay. Um, looking at Saturn now in Pisces, it's the third house. Working on relationships with siblings and neighbors, that's where the challenges are right now. And, I mean, maybe one of the neighbors are in a cult. And... This cult chants really loudly when they when you want to be sleeping, and uh, you know that would be me. Uh, <laughs> I get up and say my mantras at sunrise. I say my prayers at sunrise. You know, I you know it's a powerful time. You know, do salute to the sun, then start your day. Come come on, let that sun support you as you go through the day. Um, for you, uh, Capricorn, I'd say it's just working on family. Pay attention to your children. Get yourself in good physical shape. Once again, go exercise. Mars in the sixth house. Get you know this is kind of the last motivation for you to do that. You know you may not be quite as motivated in another week when Mars moves into Cancer, which is a debilitated Mars, and I'm not looking forward to that necessarily. Um, but here we are. Yeah. All right. So greetings, Aquarius, and welcome to your horoscope. So you know here we are starting the week this Friday. Moon just moved into Aquarius, you know, 7.23 a.m. Um, hi! Bright and cheery. Um, yeah, this weekend is about get-togethers. It's about friends. And, you know, St. Patrick's Day, it's a dangerous holiday because people drink too much. And so it's like you kind of have to watch out for your people, right? we got to watch out for each other. That's, that's when things get good, you know. It's the buddy system. We take care of each other. Have a sober driver. If you're hosting a party, be a sober host, you know. It's like, don't be like, oh, well, you know, I can get drunk because I'm home and I can just fall asleep here. That's just not cool. You know, it's, it's poor form, my friends. <laughs> Show some maturity. Show a little bit of responsibility. You know, that way, if somebody is too inebriated, you call a cab or an Uber or Lyft or something for them or get a friend to take them home or you take them home yourself or you have them home at your house or something, you know, in a place where they're safe. And, um, you know, that's what we do. We, we watch out for each other. And I think that's like Aquarius is like really the sophisticated sign for like, how do we have a better society? How do we have better human relationships? We take care of each other. We, you know, we become more aware of the needs of the most vulnerable and put, you know, our, our own needs aside to help them. And um, this weekend looks good. I mean, you're going to be on top of your game this week. Um, you got to be a little more serious about finances. I wouldn't take risk. I'd start moving a little bit slower with your investments and things because of Saturn and Pisces now. Um, and But your communication is good. You've you're got a positive outlook. There's, you know, more love coming into your home amongst your tribe and your people. And, you know, you're motivated to do good things, to take leadership and move forward. So we'll just go with that. Um, greetings, Pisces. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, Neptune's still there, you know. And so issues involving water are going to keep on coming up. Now, now that Saturn's in Pisces, it's like you have to be real. You can't just be spacing out and irresponsible. You've got to get more structure in your life. Saturn's all about structure. He's all about discipline. It's all about timing and being committed, you know, committed to doing the right thing. So this is like a time for you to make personal commitments. I'd say, especially with this new moon coming up, you know, be more disciplined in your finances. Be more disciplined and clearer in communication with your relationship with your family. That's really what has to happen here. You have to get on board with that right now. Uh, as far as like your housing situation, you know, you may have to consider moving um, while it's easy enough to do it still. And the other thing is um, 
you you're gonna get in a more fluid situation where maybe later this spring you could get into a dance class and be enjoying life just a little bit more but meanwhile you have to pay attention to the needs of your siblings and your family I would say kind of lay low this weekend and then at least till Sunday and then Sunday moon will be in Pisces and you'll be feeling a little bit you know more on top of your game and being able to bring out the kind of love you want to other people when spring equinox comes the moon's going to be in Pisces that day and so it's sort of indicative that this year at least through the summer you're an important player and then you know tomorrow the day after when there's a new moon in Aries it's like that's the time to do your ritual of what kind of year you would like to have before you and how to work with all these new energies you know with Pluto now in Aquarius and Saturn in, in Pisces and Mars about to move into Cancer just a lot of shifts on the horizons and so you are the miracle that you've been waiting for each and every one of you watching this right now and I thank you so much for being here with me patient please don't forget to subscribe please share it with friends on social media don't hit the bell notification I love your comments keep them coming friends you are are so important to me giving shouts out to you know Rebecca and to Melissa and to um, my people having birthdays this week, um, <clears throat> my friend I, Eileen in uh, Thousand Oaks area, or Westwood, wherever it is uh, she lives out there, west of San Fernando Valley. Um, happy birthday as you are turning 61. Oh my gosh, my friends are getting old, folks. <laughs> and uh, I love you all, and I'll be with you next week. Let's do this again. Om Shanti 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 Om Tat Sat. <laughs>